You know, I wanted to talk about a really good remedy if you have vein problems in your legs. But the first thing I want to talk about is what actually is the venous system and how does it differ from the arterial system? Well, veins carry blood from your legs and your fingertips back to the heart. So they're carrying the blood that is deoxygenated uh, without oxygen. And what's unique about veins is it doesn't really have a pumping system. It only pumps with motion or movement of muscles. So if you're sedentary, if you stand a lot, then you may have more vein problems. But we have all these different arteries that go all the way down to your feet and your fingertips. And then they go into tiny little capillaries and then the oxygen and nutrition is released into the tissues. And then it comes back up to the heart through the venous system. But you also have a venous system that's connected with your digestion, which carries the nutrients from your digestive system back up through the liver and then back to the heart. That's called the hepatic portal system. And if there's any obstruction in your liver, as in scar tissue, cirrhosis, or a fatty liver, there's gonna be a problem with your veins, okay? Like a backup of pressure into the venous system. You can pretty much think about uh, the liver like a sponge, right? So if the sponge is filled with um, something that's obstructing the flow of fluid through it, whether it's some scar tissue or fat, then we're, the sponge can't work. It's not gonna be able to hold the fluids. It's not gonna be able to function correctly. And it's definitely going to create a backup of pressure if this sponge is connected to uh, some plumbing. Just like if you had your water filter completely plugged up with a bunch of you know dirt and things, it's going to back up pressure. So in certain parts of your house, you're going to have a, a lack of flow and other parts, you're going to have increased flow. And when there's too much pressure in the venous system, it can create things like uh, varicose veins. It can back up veins also in your esophagus. That's called um, esophageal varices or veins in the lower uh, rectum, which is called hemorrhoids, or it can affect these veins in your stomach called gastric varices. So one big cause of vein problems is the liver. But today I want to primarily focus on something called chronic venous insufficiency, where you're getting a problem mostly in the lower part of your legs, where the vein circulation is not moving. One term for this is chronic venous insufficiency which then causes varicose veins and spider veins and phlebitis, which is inflammation in your veins, or even potentially something called deep vein thrombosis, where you're getting clots in your veins. Some of the symptoms that are related to a lack of flow in the venous system is number one, heavy legs. Number two, swelling in the legs and ankle, pain in the legs, restlessness in the legs, uh, the skin is going to be affected. So the skin might look shiny or it might give a leathery uh, appearance. You may lose your hair in your legs. It might be itchy or you might have a color change in the lower legs. Now, a lot of women after pregnancy start to develop uh, varicose veins and vein problems in their lower legs. And this is related to estrogen. So estrogen is another uh, cause of venous problems. Apparently there's just not a lot of studies on this, but we do know there's receptors for estrogen in your veins. And so if you have too much estrogen, that can affect the vascular system. And this also happens in men too. And what happens with women when they get through menopause, um, their estrogen goes down, but their progesterone really goes down. And so this gives an, uh, kind of a, an appearance of a high estrogen to low uh, progesterone ratio. So even though they have low estrogen, they have extremely low progesterone. So this could be considered as an estrogen dominant situation. Now in men, as they age, the testosterone does go down and that's gonna give them higher amounts of relative estrogen too. And especially if their liver is damaged because the liver is a key organ to regulate or buffer this estrogen. So that being said, the number one best remedy for vein problems in your lower legs is this. Red vine leaf extract. And I found this data uh, in a patent where they had all this additional research. And of course, this patent was probably based on the huge study they did. It was a randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blinded clinical trial on quite a few people who had mild to moderate venous insufficiency. 
Now, the amount of red vine leaf extract that they used was between 360 to 720 milligrams per day for 12 weeks. And the results were significant. Red vine leaf is also good for an enlarged liver, an enlarged spleen, swelling in your legs, hemorrhoids, bruising, bleeding, nasal congestion, capillary thickness, and it's a great anti-inflammatory. And it also helps to balance the permeability within your capillaries. And the other thing I would recommend is to start doing the rebound exercise simply because that's going to start increasing lymph flow and help push some of this fluid through your veins. And of course, I would definitely recommend doing walking on a regular basis. You want to keep active. You do not want to do a lot of sitting. You don't want to do a lot of standing. Now, if there is a liver problem, which is very common in these cases, the remedy that I would recommend is called tutka. It's a type of bile salt that is not only good for a fatty liver, but it's also good for cirrhosis of the liver. And tutka will actually increase the flow of bile through the bile ducts. Now, if there's an estrogen problem, if there is an estrogen dominant problem, I would recommend a product called DIM, which is a super concentrated uh, anti-estrogenic uh, cruciferous blend. Now, since we're on the topic of estrogen in the liver, if you haven't seen this video, I think this would be a really good one for you to watch next. Check it out.